Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to use photomatics to make great HDR. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. My name is Serge Ramelli, and what do I do twice a week? I make tutorials. Click here if you want to get the raw file for this episode, a very nice Yoda, and click here if you want to subscribe to my YouTube channel. In last episode, I showed you how to use AutoPano Pro to make panoramas. It's an amazing software. When Photoshop cannot do it, AutoPano can. This week, I'm going to show you how to use Photomatics to make HDR. Photomatics is the software for HDR. I don't always do HDR as a photographer, but sometimes there are some cases when I have like grungy interior designs or I want to make something a bit oldish or give an illustrative look to something, I use that software because it's got a great look. This is the final result. May the force be with you and let me show you how I did this. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. So, um, before we get started, I have a good news because if you want to get Photomatics, which is a software I've been using now for seven years, I believe, uh, you can get uh, a deduction on it. If you go to my gear uh, discount, uh, I think you can get up to 15% uh, off. If you click this link from my gear page and you click uh, HDR soft, you can get it uh, and you use the code PhotoSearch, you can get it 50% off, which is something I never got. That's a deal we just made with HDR soft. And um, so I'm gonna show you the latest version of Photomatics. It's something I've been doing off and on for eight years. I don't do it so much for the landscapes. However, there is some cases when I want to get a very illustrative look, which I find is very, very cool. And I want to show you a bit the workflow. So when you, in, first you install it and you make sure that you have installed the, uh, the plugin that goes with Lightroom, that's part of the installation process. Install process, it says, you know, instructions for Windows or Mac. You have a, an instruction, which is to make sure that uh, the Lightroom plugin checkbox is installed on Windows and for Mac, um, for Mac, blah, 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 it's a different uh, thing. You just read the instructions and make sure you really have that plugin. It's very handy to be able to use it from Lightroom. Okay, once you have it installed, um, this is how it works. This is Yoda, because uh, I was at Lucasfilm last week visiting, a, I had a friend there, a fan of my show, uh, and actually a friend now, and uh, he got me to tour Lucasfilm, and there is this Yoda fountain. And I wanted to make a very illustrative photo, so I did a bracketing with my Sony by hand. But the problem is this is the underexposed photo, this is the normal photo, and this is the overexposed photo. If you don't know how to bracket on your camera, I made a video which you can find the link here on, the, on how to do it with Canon. Now, as far as Sony is concerned, uh, I didn't make a video on that. You have to figure it out, but it's, it's pretty easy to find. The only problem with Sony is that you have to take one shot uh, after shot. So if you do it by hand, it moves a lot. When the Canon, you can put the timer on and just press one time and it's gonna take all three photos, like tac, 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 tac. You don't have to press the button. So I didn't have a remote. I, I didn't wanna pull out the tripod. So I shot this by hand, so it's moving a little bit. That's the raw file which is on the retouch, but that's fine because Photomatics is gonna do a beautiful job. Of that. So all I have to do is right click, export, Photomatics Pro. If you did the proper installation, you should have it there. And you have this first window that's there. Now, very important, uh, I'm using uh, yeah version 5.05, I believe, which is the latest version of Photomatics. So align images, yes. Uh, crop talent result, uh, actually no. Uh, I, don't want, I don't want that because I might mix it up with the original photo and it's gonna help later on, you will see why. Uh, Taken on tripod, no. On hell, include perspective correction, yes. Okay, um, show option to remove ghost. I'm not gonna go into that on this tutorial, but no, ghost FX is when you have things which are moving, like the leaf there could be something of an issue, but I'm not gonna use that option. Reduce nose, underexposed image only, yes. Reduce chromatic aberration, yes. Automatically re-import into Lightroom, yes. File name, I like to put my own file, I'm gonna call this Yoda Jedi. And uh, yeah, 16 bit. Uh, TIFF is perfect. Stack with a selected photo, yes again. Okay, so now I'm ready to export. And so what Lightroom is gonna do is just export three TIFF files, send them over to Photomatix, and Photomatix is gonna pre-process them and we'll take it from there. It's gonna take a minute, I'm gonna put it on post. Okay, so here is Photomatix. I'm gonna 
maximize the window and you can you can do some scaling to make it bigger or small i'm going to make it a little bit bigger so you see it's kind of weird here because i did not crop the image it but it did do the alignment uh, you have two basic process tone mapping and exposure fusion what i'm looking for is for that hdr look so i always actually use tone mapping once you've used tone mapping you've got three different algorithms or methods uh, i usually go for actually detail enhancer or a contract optimizer let me show you both so contrast optimizer is very simple we're going to start with a simple one so you have the strength if you put it on the right it's basically going to give a look to it i really like this look i think it works really well on this type of things you can zoom in at 100 percent to see the details by just zooming over uh, tone compression when you move it to the right it's gonna have an even more illustrative look so i'm going for a pretty illustrative look on this one uh, lighting effects same thing well all this three sliders is basically going to give you that hdr look so if you put it all three to the right it's going to be very like pentally like if you put it very to the left uh, they do very similar things well lighting effect is gonna make things a bit brighter tone compression i think i'm gonna go you just play around I, what's that's what i do i just play around with it until i have something that i like but i want to go for a little illustrative look on this one okay white and black clip i don't do here because i i, I rather do that in lightroom same thing for mid-tones and I only touch these three sliders. Basically, I move them usually like around like this, you know, I go like 73.5, something like that. So I kind of like that. There's not too much hellos around it, which sometimes can happen in HDR. Um, okay, let me show you the other algorithm it's called detail and answer, and then we can compare both. So strength is the same thing, color saturation, saturation I don't touch. I leave that into Lightroom. Tone compression, well, we already have this one before. So what I usually do is I put a bit of tone compression, but I pull like the detail contrast. This is the one we don't have. Uh, it just adds a lot of contrast. And I just like the, the look that it gives us. I, I find it much easier to use than uh, uh, the, the HDR option in Photoshop, for example. Lighting adjustments. Now you can click here and you get five different lighting adjustments. I always go for natural or natural plus. On this case, natural. You can go to medium, surreal, and surreal plus but that's going to make a big hello around it i don't want that so let's go for natural plus something like this and um smooth highlights white point black points i don't touch i do touch gamma though sometimes to the left or to the right you know one thing you should know is that when whenever you come out of of uh, photomatics you're gonna have to do some retouching in uh in uh, in lightroom it's not you know it's not perfect out of this and then you have some advanced options Micro smoothing is kind of cool because it helps to uh, to eliminate the sort of the grainy aspect of things, and um, and you just play around with it. And what I usually do is I, I go so I put the strands like pretty much to the right, color saturation I don't touch, tone compression pretty much to the right, detail contrast the whole way to the right, and then usually what I do is uh, and then I get my gamma to go down a little bit. That's what I like to do. So. And I make sure that, yeah, it looks perfect. It's very crisp. And um, yeah, in micro smoothing, that's the only one I touch. I usually put it in the middle. And uh, and now what I do is I, I compare a contrast optimizer and detail enhancer. I actually like what contrast optimizer did on this one. It makes it very contrasty. Uh, but we can do that also in Lightroom. I think I'm gonna go through for the detail enhancer on this one. And uh, I definitely need to do a bit more work on it. Let me see what natural is going to give me. Natural is not so bad. Let's lower a little bit the gamma. But you know, that's basically that's the general idea. And um, you can use also some of the presets. I can so save this as a preset if I want to. So um, preset, uh, save preset. I'll call this, uh, for example, Yoda. Okay. And, um, and you can also check here on the, on, on the right, you got diff that's the default, uh, balance, photographic, natural, painterly effect, painterly too. I mean, you got some crazy stuff there, you know, uh, vibrant. I like to um, use, uh, I like to use the, um, 
the, the one that I just saved, which is Yoda here. Okay. I think this one is pretty cool on this one. And uh, yeah. So when you're finished, you just click uh, save and re-import. And that's the, basically it. You know, that's, that's the workflow. What I advise you is just check detail and answer, check contrast optimizer, see what you like best. I, I think it's too much contrast there. So, you know, maybe I could turn down the lighting effects on this one, but I think I'm going to go for detail and answer on this. Yeah, I like that. And I'm going to click save and re-import. And it's going to re-import it into Lightroom and, uh, and add it uh, to uh, my um, library here. And it's going to stack it up with your original image. So I'm going to put on pause until that's done. That's done. That's the, the, the image that we just got. So usually I do some more retouching. Like I basically, I open a bit the shadows and the highlights a little bit, not too much. And then I'm going to do basically my white point holding the alt key and my black point and adding even more contrast, making it a bit, yeah, a little bit brighter, something like this. And it just gives like a really cool look. Look, I mean, I show you the difference. You see, uh, let's say this is the normal photo. If I did my usual workflow, opening up the shadows, bring down the highlights, doing the whites and the blacks and adding clarity, um, Clarity is sometimes very strong. This is the look I would get, very metallic type of look. And this is the look that I get from HDR. Uh, so it's, it's, oh, hold on, yeah. It's a different look. I think on this one I'm gonna add, I'm gonna crush the blacks a little bit more. Something like this. And uh, maybe add a bit of, uh, no, I'm not gonna touch the white balance on this one. Mm, clarity, maybe a little bit of vibrance. No. Not too much, the, the blue is already very vibrant. I might even turn this down, something like this, yeah. Okay, but then one thing you, you can still do is this is the normal exposure, just retouch. And this is the uh, this is the, uh, the photomatics. What I usually do is I take both of them, I, write, I select them both, I right click, edit, and open as layers in Photoshop. And sometimes you have some aspects, so I'm gonna click on open anyway, some aspects of photomatics you might not like. You're not, you don't have to do the HDR look for everything. I like what it does to the Yoda. I don't necessarily what it does for the trees, for example. So what I usually do is I re-import into Photoshop. And this is, you know, just an optional step. And, um, okay, so that's without HDR. That's with HDR. Okay, so I'm going to put with HDR on top. I'm going to select both of them and I'm going to go to edit. Auto align layers. I'm going to auto align them both because uh, this is very important. And you know, like I like what the HDR did to the Yoda. I don't like what it did to the tree. So when you have some stuff which are a bit out of focus, it's not always nice. But you can always, you know, uh, basically put on a, a mask and uh, take a brush, make it black 100%, and just bring back the original trees and don't get that HDR look on, on the background. Maybe here in, in front, I don't need this HDR look on that on these tones here, for example, okay? So I only have it on the Yoda, okay? Which is kind of cool. There's even some hollows that I can probably take out by just, you know, painting around Yoda so I don't have the hollows there. So I'm just, you know, getting the best out of both worlds, basically. Something like this. Let me show you. So I'm mixing both, you know, just to get that illustrative look. And then I'm going to crop it because I don't like the way it is. It looks at all. So I'm going to crop it like this. I'm going to crop it like this. And I'm going to take, put him here so that he's not centered. You know, it's just more a powerful portrait of Yoda. And I'm going to close this with Command W. And probably the last thing I'll do on this one is uh, just putting a little like, vignette effect to, uh, you know, to make it even more interesting. So I'm a huge uh, Star Wars fan, so it was great. I love retouching Star Wars uh, characters. Uh, so I'm just going to add some postcard vignetting on this one to make it even more, you know, cinematic. And, and voila, this is my Yoda. You know, I probably would, you know, do some brush 
and add a, you know, make this a bit wider here, flow and density around 90, exposure, just add a bit of, ex just make him a little bit wider, make his eyes pop a little bit more here and here. It's maybe too much, but something like this, you know, and that's, I like this kind of illustrative look. On some photo, I think it works well, and on this photo, I think it works pretty well. Uh, let me just recrop it a little bit, because something is, something is, yeah, missing here. And also, I think I'm gonna add a graded filter, which I'm gonna make the bottom part a bit darker. The bottom part a bit darker, because I don't want so much attention on this. It's gonna help close the photo even more. Let me make it look this way. Maybe not that much, something like this. And then we have a dramatic Yoda uh, portrait. Voila, so this is really uh, something I would use Photomatics for. I think it gives a lot of personality to this photo. You can use it for many things. This is just my first tutorial on it and I'll be doing more. Don't forget you can use, get 15% off if you use Photo Surge uh, and you get the link from my website, photosurge.com. Voila, I hope you like this. I hope you're gonna try Photomatics. They have a trial version if you want. It can give some cool effects to your photos. and But I guess most of you guys know this software, uh, you know, if you've been following my tutorials. But voila, here you go. All right, guys, I hope you like these tutorials. If you have any comments, ideas of tutorials you want me to do, just leave a comment in this YouTube video, and I will do my best to fulfill your wishes. Mesdames et messieurs, au revoir.